as a CEO and, and a business owner, <clears throat> I've always lived my life by like, like I did my jazz improv. Oh, we compose on the spot. Um, I was actually writing in my journal this morning about, but the, the lesson now is like, learn the song and then you can improvise. Um, and, you know, write out this or even write the song, right? As long as it's written out and then you follow the plan, you can improvise while you're going in the song rather than living like without a plan, without forecasting. Without Absolutely. Plan. Hello, I'm Erin Marcus, founder and CEO of Conquer Your Business. And I want to welcome you to Ready Yet? If all you needed was a step-by-step -step plan of what to do, you could buy a book on how to succeed and you would be all set. But here's the rub. You'll never do what it takes until you become the person it takes to do it. The Ready Yet podcast is dedicated to those who are ready to become the person who succeeds, ready to become the person who steps into more, and ready to become the best version of themselves. In the I'm Ready interview series, join me for inspiring conversations with people who figured out who they needed to be in order to achieve their dreams and were brave enough to be that person. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Ready Yet podcast where I get to have so much fun and such amazing conversations with a wide variety of entrepreneurs talking about who they had to be and what they had to do to get to where they are and what's next. And I'm really excited about my guest today, Mr. Vaughn Fahey, because I met Vaughn, it's got to be a year and a half ago, maybe. Uh, oh. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was um, what I call one of those making making googly eyes across a crowded zoom room i'm like this person i like this person why do i like this person right but that's how we do it these days and so we connected and had some conversations didn't see you for a while reconnected you know back and forth and you've been a client and you're awesome and i love what you're doing and i can't wait to share some of how cool you are All with right. the audience. So why don't you give everyone a bit of a more official introduction of who <laughs> you are and what you do? Sure. My name is Vaughn Foy, also known as The Voice. You've Vaughn. never told me that. You should have said, I oh. always said Fahey. I know. I was like, Foy. well. <laughs> tell me that. Awesome. It looks like, it looks like Vaughn Fahey. Foy. That's even cooler, actually, now that I hear yeah, like toy with an F. I All know. right, now we know. Now we from know. the Virgin Islands, and that's they say he's a fly boy out there. So anyway. ah, now I know. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. Craig. No problem. Um, but anyway, they also call me the voice brander, and <clears throat> I am an audio engineer that specializes in uh, right now with audio books and helping authors to capture the words from their pages and getting into the ears and on the playlist of their listeners. And um, I also do things with music. I'm a jazz saxophonist, um, have 14 albums, and I love setting out the atmospheres uh, for people uh, near and far, but really helping uh, to capture three decades of uh, recording since cassette tape and things like that and uh, learning to be a, or becoming uh, a better CEO uh, rather than the solopreneur in, in this audio world um, with podcast and clubhouse and all of these other major things that's happening in the audio scene, so. I love that you say that because I think that there's certain times in businesses where you feel like there's a tipping point, right? Mm -hmm. And whether it's financial or team or what you're offering, there's these different tipping points that we reach. And one of the places I see people get stuck or, you know, not that they stay stuck, but it's, it's a difficult transition mm. to move from solopreneur into <laughs> business owner. Cause you can call both of those an entrepreneur, right? But how do you move from a solopreneur into a business owner, um, especially with what you do, because there are a lot of moving parts to what you deliver that you don't necessarily have to be the one doing, Right. but it all <laughs> kind of lands on your shoulders. So what's been the hardest part as you continue to make that transition? What do you think has been the hardest part to do? 
the hardest part is because I love engineering and I love the details and I love making something that seems impossible to edit. I call it Photoshop for audio. I, you know, oh, I cool. Backgrounds totally. and stuff, you know. Totally. So the hardest part was, is, is leaving um, or delegating that out, allowing someone else, another team member or hiring and, and, and trusting and delegating to someone else to do those parts while I become the face and the voice and the connector that brings the business in to supply for them. So transitioning and letting go of the, the only, I, I've been doing this for so long, I do it well, but I can only do it, there's only one of me. And right, so right. the expansion and, and the kind of letting go to being the one that does that and then to be more so of the visionary overseeing, projecting and planning and um, uh, making sure that, uh, well, doors stay open and things right. that keep expanding. So that's been the hardest. Well, and I think that's a real, I mean, that's a really good point because most people who go into business for themselves as an, you know, whether you're a bookkeeper, a photographer, a musician who plays at events, you go into business to do the thing your business does. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to have the financial reward of the business owner, there's only two ways to do it. Mm. You could either charge more or sell more. Right. Right. There's really only, and sometimes the market has a little bit of influence on how much you can charge. Right. Mostly it is internal. How much can you confidently charge? But truthfully, <laughs> there are certain markets that have, you know, there's a, there's a range, an acceptable range. And even if you were at the high end of the acceptable range, it kind of puts a cap on your income yeah. if you're taking the solopreneur route. That's fine as long as you do it by choice. I'm a big fan of making your own decisions and being in charge. Sure. But you're absolutely right. Most of the time when you try to really scale a business, you stop getting to do the thing you went in the business to do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because now you got to be the salesperson and the marketer and everything like that. Yeah, really. And, and uh, yeah, letting that go and taking on the, the CEO hat to, you know, what needs to be done and you do it well, but being able to also, um, I'm not a selfish person, but you, there's a, there's a place of um, um, really making space to allow others to grow. Where were you at, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, or 10 days ago? And how can I, how can I have five others that are just starting off to do editing and how can I teach them and pour in so that now you can, you know, exponentially serve more people. So it goes back to like how many people, for me, it's been how many people, how many more people do I want to serve for the purpose that I have? If it's yeah. getting out, disseminating influence through audio, I know I can only do so much for the hours that I can spend. And like you said, yeah, yeah I can only charge so much to where people are like, well, okay, I can't pay that rather than have 10 other people being able to do the same thing. And now you're able to serve a hundred people right. to get their message out with all back to the purpose and the mission. I, absolutely. And I think that's one of the things some of us hold on to for exactly like you say, purpose-driven payday. How can I have an impact? Mm. And knowing that not only, and see what you think about this, but not only being able to impact more clients, but I remember in particular, my last business where mm. I had 15 employees, the idea that I was responsible mm. for somebody else's income right. was both rewarding and absolutely terrifying. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you're serving there as well by bringing in engineers behind you and showing them how to do things. Yeah. So what's been the most, so if that's been the hardest part, what's been the most fun? Uh, the, I, I'm probably similar. The most fun has been uh, being able to see how, um, to see the growth. Like 
I mean, this since jumping on, you know, we we just met. I jumped on Clubhouse in, in like a couple months afterwards, and literally it it grew so fast. Actually, it, it went. I won't say too fast, but it, I wasn't ready. <laughs> you were a little you. little deer in headlights because, and this is one of the things I love is there's a quote that I've heard lately: "Success loves speed," mm. and. <laughs> how many people, right? How many people get an idea or have a conversation and they all go, well, that's a cool idea. And then they go back to what they were doing. And it was not like you were unhappy doing what you were doing. Right. You play, you know, I mean, hmm. you and I had a conversation and in that conversation, this idea came forth. Yes. To serve authors. And you just kind of went, yeah, like like we were just having a conversation. And well, you weren't a client yet. We were literally just like, <laughs> what do you do? What's so cool? Mm -hmm. Tell me something about you. And and it came. And like the next thing I know, <laughs> like, dude, I'm on I'm on Clubhouse and I'm in this book room and now I've got three clients. And what is it that we were gonna do for that? <laughs> <laughs> but I love it because it was just, you know, when the right idea and the right fit happened. Do you take action? Right. Or do you take a step back? Right. Yeah. And when it comes and it's like, oh, you can eat, you know, like you said, I was a deer in the headlights and it, it was coming and I was like, oh yeah, I know I can do this. And it was the original, you know, the pace was already going, but somehow turbo kicked on and it was like, you know, hyperspace and um, it's like, whoa, wait, you know, but you know, keep going. And there was a lot of lessons. Um, I remember someone told me a while, it's better to have, um, you know, a $600 loss lesson rather than a $600,000 right. lesson. Impossible, absolutely. <laughs> you know, you're later, you're you get to pick, absolutely. And it's like, I learned a lot of um, uh, lessons along the way in different, you know, whether just to stretch, it was like, okay, okay. Um, but I'm glad I learned it then. But the great, so the greatest thing back to like what you asked is being able to look back and see, wow, this is where I was. And the journey has been, um, you know, very super challenging, super humbling at times. Um, but also at the same time, when I stopped to look at the numbers, it's like, I've never made this much money you know, I've never been this successful mon monetary wise, even though I hadn't even had a chance to stop to really look at what the accomplishment is. So now looking back, it's like, wow, I could, you know, you, you do this and you get comfortable at being able to do the that and level. then yeah. learn more and then you, you, you keep going up. So but you keep going up is the key. Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of people reach that first level and sit in a new comfort zone, which, you know, and here's the thing. It, that doesn't make them wrong if right. that is truly where they want to be. Right. If it's truly where someone wants to be. I have absolutely no problem with that. When I get sad is when I see people limiting themselves because mm. of a false story they're telling themselves or a limiting mm. belief or the fear. Yeah. The fear of going, <laughs> going for this, like, okay, yeah, that was a super stretch. So, you know, and I'm just going to chill out right here. <laughs> Just gonna sit here for a minute right? <laughs> like when you when you share with me it's like um, okay we're gonna raise your price okay and we did <laughs> then like not even a week later okay we're gonna raise them it's like wait i didn't get <laughs> wait a minute, i only sold one of these no nope, we're good keep going and you but you but you did it you know and sometimes you did it a little bit and sometimes you and i, I think that's the key sometimes you made teeny steps forward and right. sometimes you made a leap forward Right. With the directions forward. Yeah. And I think there's, I know with my clients and you're kind of reflecting this back, which I like, you know, there's this idea that if I don't raise my rates a ton and do all these big things that I'm not succeeding. And that's just not true. Mm. It's right. just not true that as long as you're moving forward in some way. Right. Right. It's so good. Yeah. yeah you get there as long as you're moving forward in some way. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the stepping back or the times when it's like, it, you know, thinking about it, it's like moving forward and you, you don't really, until you look back, you don't know how far forward um, 
that have really come. And you may even feel like I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. But that, that constant push and when you're able to stop and you know what? I, you know what? I come look along. That, right. Look what I just, yeah. <laughs> and I think, yeah, I mean, it's just as important to celebrate not just the small wins. It's one of the reasons I track all mm. my numbers and I, I give you guys such a hard time about tracking everything, not just so that I can make decisions and you know what to do, but it's actually a confidence booster. And I know that wasn't your favorite part of <laughs> things that we would work on, but I love hearing you say a lot. So many people avoid the numbers because they scared they're going to be disappointed. Right. Right. But you're feeling that from within the weeds, mm. which means you don't have a good perspective on it. Right. Right. So when you take that moment and look back at the numbers from the 30,000 foot view, yes. it's like, all right, I see that. I see that. And then it's encouragement to like, oh yeah, you seen where I came from. And then it also is like, okay, so that means because you've done this, oh, I can go. Okay. Now it makes it easier to outlook and see, I know all of this is in the way or in the, it's going to be the challenge, but you already know how to overcome that. Cause you already did. <clears throat> it's just that it, more numbers or more right. it gets easier it yeah. actually gets easier to overcome the difficult things because basically the confidence of i did the difficult thing and i didn't die right <laughs> gives you the confidence to do the next difficult thing mm. with less hesitation and less fear and i've learned to in the in those lessons um and a lot of them are painful and Oh God, yes. I mean, let's, yeah, let, let's seriously not diminish the horror of the lesson while you're in it. Oh I don't want to go, thank you for saying that because I don't <laughs> want to gloss over that. But, you know, before we even started recording, we were sharing the story of me throwing my only pair of reading glasses and exploding them across the wall in a moment of frustration. And now I had still had my problem and now I couldn't see. So I mean, <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not to diminish the yeah. challenge in mm. the moment. I think a lot of the pain and the challenge, um, you know, I could share about um, where because things grew fast and I wasn't, um, I wasn't, I was ready. I wasn't ready. I was, I learned the lessons about expansion and how to, you know, organization, uh, one main communication um, with clients, you know, there was, I would be so bogged down there where there's a couple I didn't speak to. And um, they were like, hey, you know, I've invested this money. I haven't heard nothing from you. Um, and for me, a person that really, I'm very personal, you know, I like, so it's, it was like devastating. Like I failed you know, meeting, you know, uh, expectations or whatever. And, um, and then trying to make it up and, but it helped me to learn <clears throat> to put like communication way in the front. It was very, very painful, very uh, humbling. Uh, it was a long stretch of time. It, you know, it was like weeks of, <laughs> oh, you know, I, you know, and one of the things that I learned, and I actually learned this, and I, I'm not perfect at it by any means, but one of the things I learned working in my previous businesses with families with aging parents mm. is that avoiding a difficult conversation doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It just means when it happens, it's going to be a worse time and a worse conversation. Yes. Right. And I see that with, and, and I've caught myself doing it too, where I like have a bit of bad news or I just hired a new team member, which meant I had to tell three other team people that I wasn't hiring them. Mm. And I felt bad and I was avoiding it. And then I got an email from one of them asking me what was going on. And like, I was like embarrassed, like right. I'm supposed to be in charge of things here and I'm not holding up my end. But yeah, yeah like avoiding those difficult conversations Ah. ostrich doesn't help you know playing ostrich doesn't help us in any way but we do it right we find ourselves doing yeah. that i hope you're enjoying this episode of the ready yet podcast i know i really enjoy having conversations about who you need to be in order to reach new heights as founder and ceo of conquer your business i work with my clients at the intersection where what they need to do to succeed meets who they need to be to do it 
If you would like to have a conversation about your business, please reach out to me at erin at conqueryourbusiness.com. Yeah, those those have been the the hard lessons to make sure. It's like no matter how bad it is, you got to have the conversation the sooner the best, and um, and just and and learn to be honest. Um, this is where it was. I'm you know honest about it, um, and and to be able to um, accept however they, you know, yeah, however yeah. their response is, you know. Yeah. They, justify but but then it, it it's made me better for the future clients and what how I set up how I you know it's I, made you better and the other thing was you didn't stop mm. you didn't stop and there's so many times these uncomfortable feelings and I I forget if it was Brene Brown or somebody else who stopped calling them negative feelings because the feelings aren't negative they're definitely uncomfortable but we Mm -hmm. don't you know I'm trying to learn not to imply that it's bad to have them that's good right so I thought that was helpful um but the uncomfortable feelings make Mm. us retreat Mm. and what happens when we do that is we just have to as you know repeat the same lesson over and over and over again until we learn it. So okay. if you retreat, you didn't learn anything. And what you're describing is it sucked. It was uncomfortable, but you move forward through it, okay. meaning you changed how you approach things and, and you just get iteratively better at it. Right. Instead of retreating and having to get knocked over the head 85 times. So that's my new approach. As soon as I screw something up, how fast can I move forward through it so mm. that I don't have to get knocked over the head in order to learn the lesson? <laughs> how quick can I learn? <laughs> how quick can I not do this again? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. So what are you looking forward to? You know, I'm looking, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to, because I can see like really, when I say near future, like in a matter of like weeks at the most month, you know, before the end of the year, I'm looking forward to, uh, because I've learned those lessons and because I've changed and makes adjustments and because I'm building teams, like I can see what's needed structurally to support what's about to come or what's kind of waiting to come. Um, I'm looking forward to the confidence in um, opening the gate, so to speak, like, You know, I'm allowing a little, things are kind of dammed up, if you will, you know, so I'm letting it trickle through because, yeah. you know, I-, I Well, and it's so, you know, and, and I always laugh when I talk to you about this because <laughs> you have a problem that most of us would pay to have. <laughs> True. In that, you show up just being you hmm. and the freaking floodgates open. You have really- <laughs> This whole idea of working in your genius zone, Mm. showing up as your authentic self, showing up to serve for higher purpose, showing up um, with what differentiates you, like this, find us, you know, identify a problem and have the solution to it. Mm. There's this huge market for what you are doing. Mm. And the way that you can talk about it and with your background and your approach and your authenticity, Mm. you walk into the freaking clubhouse room and you call, you know, and I get a text message with, I got five clients. (laughs) The rest of us would pay to have that problem. You're like, I have five clients, but I only want two. What do I do? And I like figure out a way to have five clients. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But it's, you know, it doesn't make it, it's just a different problem. It's not an easier problem. And you're still at the point I know in your business where you're working on building revenue, not yet profit, because you still have to figure everything out and it's expensive to figure everything out. Right. When I hear you say that you're looking forward to being poised for the future, I'm just excited for you because I actually know what that means mm. and what, what can happen <laughs> there. Yes, it's a 
it's right on it's right on cusp and i can see it really clear and the great thing is that um um knowing that i mean it's always going to be i always there's going to be other lessons there's going to be other growth things and even you know what i see is going to be even beyond um but at least being able to uh, I have people in position now and, you know, I see the positions that are necessary that I'm, you know, like you said, it's expensive to, <laughs> to get it. And, but I, I, I can see it and I, and I'm literally like uh, not rushing, but I want to accelerate that to be established because I, I want to now operate them at things or at a place where I've seen others operate, you know, yeah. And, or I've, I've been learning about, yeah, you, you can operate like this, but oh, now I know what is required. And now we can ride the bike because all the nuts are- <laughs> These are tightened. all finally there. Exactly. Now you get to go for it. But it, and it is so true that, and I hope people are catching on to the lessons of how, of what you're describing, that the only way to learn how to build the team is to build the team. You yeah. don't sit by yourself in your office and figure out how to build the team. You yeah. can really, especially as an entrepreneur, and that's where it's so different than corporate. You can only learn how to do the things you need to do by doing the things you need to do. That's true. <laughs> and embracing, you know, like we talked about the, the wins and the excitement and the being realistic around the, um, pitfalls yeah but I, I think that is something I've watched you do now mm. for a year almost a year and mm. it's that you stuck with it and that you keep learning and you keep growing and you're doing the things so that you can learn how to do the things and it's, <laughs> that's just how that works so I'm very yes. very excited for you well it's cool I've always I always refer back to like the little nuggets you share and it's like, see, okay, that's, you need that. Yeah, I got <laughs> what she was talking about. So instead of the smile and nod at, you know, during our conversations <laughs> back and now I know that at least you go home and you're like, all right, now I understand what she was talking about. Yep. It was just that, just, you just got to follow that. Just, that's <laughs> yes. another thing to learn. It's like, you know, if um, the other day I was like, I just need, to because we get we're in an information mm -hmm. floodgate i mean we we don't need any more information for the next 20 years Seriously. um but we it's a matter of application i mean if you just do the i mean continue on the thing that i learned from you like nine months ago it's just like this there's just one thing if you just apply but you know there's that's another i think lesson um in growing in the journey is um, you don't need the new and shiny or what everybody else is doing. You just need what was given to you and you apply it for you. And you, if, as long as it's working and multiplying, stay with that instead of shifting lanes or direction. Oh or my gosh. Yes. Setting new, yeah. So that's um, another thing. It's like, why do I have all this extra, these extra backpacks? I'm only carrying an apple and a water <laughs> bottle. I don't have five, you know, designer bags. Right. <laughs> and this is what we do, though. I laugh all the time. And, and I'm just as guilty as everyone else. There's something about the entrepreneurial world where we try this marketing effort and it works. So what's the next thing we do? We stop doing it <laughs> so that we can look for a different effort. And we're like, and wait a minute. <laughs> it works. Why are you? And I think what we're used to, we get, we get used to it being hard. We get mm -hmm. used to it being a struggle. We think it has to be hard. We think it has to be a struggle. Mm -hmm. And once it becomes easy, we think that's what's wrong. Right, right, that's true. We think it's wrong because it's easier when in fact it's easy because we've now learned how to do it. Right. That's... Or we found the, the, you know, we through trial and error found the right way. So now it's easy. And going back to what you said about looking back about at your numbers, if you weren't tracking that, you wouldn't know. Right. You know, that's a great way to like, well, my income's going up every month. Maybe I should just keep doing what I'm doing. It's working so far. Yeah, when we don't stop. Um, and we, I love what you said about being, um, when it becomes easy, 
I think um, I would say, you know, addicted to things being, like you said, being hard. And it's like, oh man, no, I must be doing something that this is, you know, can't be that simple. I got to learn something else. It can't be, oh, it has to be this thing now, instead of being able to, like, I don't need anything else. I, I'm not missing out on anything because I ha- it's already in my hand. I already have. Oh. <laughs> and I just love the fact that this is coming from you. <laughs> when everything about your persona is the chill jazz saxophone (laughs) player right and i mean that's so an identity for you and yet you're just as at risk as the rest of us crazy people (laughs) for falling victim to the if it's not hard it doesn't count problem oh yeah that's that's um that's a you know a great lining up because when I play my music it's it's effortless I can you know what do you want to play Play I know I've seen it (laughs) (laughs) and you're right and thinking I always I always thought uh, or I'm changing my thought from like yeah but business and being a solopreneur or a CEO that's like hard I need to you know it's like no I don't tell you playing the saxophone the way you play coming from me that's hard (laughs) (laughs) That looks hard. You make it look easy. I don't know, right? But it's right when you're in your flow, you're in your flow. Yeah. Just learn to make, I, I've had to learn. One thing that I, I've always compared with um, as a CEO and, and a business owner, <clears throat> I've always lived my life by like, like I did my jazz improv. Oh, we compose on the spot. Um, I was actually writing my journal this morning about but the, the lesson now is like, learn the song and then you can improvise um, and, you know, write out the song or even write the song, right? As long as it's written out and then you follow the plan, you can improvise while you're going in the song rather than living like without a plan, without forecasting. Without Absolutely. And, so, well, and I will, to your point, you didn't, you weren't able to improvise in your saxophone when you started. Right, right. <laughs> it might have sounded like you were doing that, right? But that, you know what I mean? You don't get to do that until right. you're really good at it. You don't right. get to do that and have it sound good. Right, right. Until you're really good at it. You gotta fine tune that thing. <laughs> right. So yeah, is there some improvisation and response, not reactiveness, but some responsiveness that you need to have in your business? Sure. But you don't get to run it that way until right. it's a well-oiled machine right 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 and that's what i'm learning it's like vaughn <clears throat> learn the song and then you can play it however but you know the song same thing in jazz jazz is always a there's always a base of the song a format and then the improv you go for solos and you improv over the base of the song and then you end the base of the song but the whole thing is like learn what's the song and that's what i'm uh, continue learning to do it's like Ron, learn the song of business and then you can, yeah improv you you can improvise that's not the issue it's about learning the song so that it communicates people need to hear the song and recognize it if it's if it's take five if it's you know it has the solid foundation yeah right you can't improvise effectively if you don't have the solid foundation Right. It doesn't communicate well. People are like, well, what is that? I hear right. no. Yeah, they're wondering what it is you do for a living. And I don't <laughs> understand. <that. laughs> Speaking of what it is that you do for a living, mm-hmm. for all of our thought leaders out there who have self published books and are missing out on what's probably what you have the statistics three quarters of a potential market? It's that's 20% of. <clears throat> One out of every five readers in the U.S. are audiobook only readers. It's twenty percent of the market. Are audiobook only? Only. Not to mention how many, such as myself, who listen and read. Right. So, right. if people are interested in getting their voice heard, and would love your guidance on mm-hmm. uh, how to do that, how, what is the best way for them to get a hold of you? They can connect with me um, on going on the webpage. You can go to thevoicebrander.com. <clears throat> it's probably the easiest rather than spelling my name. <laughs> that I've known you forever and I was saying it wrong. 
No, that's how it, look, it looks. That's the way it looks. But, <laughs> but you can go to thevoicebrander.com or and from there find me on Instagram. Um, I'm on Clubhouse and Facebook and all of that. Von Foy and I that's the easiest place to go to and connect with. Great. Set up an awesome. appointment. Well, thank you so much for sharing so much of your story with everybody. I love when people are willing to come on here and uh, just be honest about everything because it just helps everyone else. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm honored. Thank you so much for joining me on the Ready Yet podcast. I get so motivated by the amazing accomplishments of the remarkable people I meet, and I'm excited to be able to share some of their stories with you. You can find more episodes of Ready Yet at your favorite source for podcasts, or at conqueryourbusiness.com. And if you've already decided that you are ready to become the person you need to be to achieve your big goals, feel free to reach out to find out how I can support you in your efforts. Or check out the Work With Aaron page on the Conquer Your Business website. I also invite you to share this podcast with anyone you know who loves to learn and be inspired. And if you're so inclined, I'd be absolutely grateful for any reviews you'd like to share as well. Thanks again for joining me. This has been Aaron Marcus, hopefully inspiring and helping you to go conquer your big dreams.